administration, private administration differences. So we have started with the next concept in the same unit called new public management. So the distinctions are developing slowly. Okay, now. So to start off with new public management, we've discussed yesterday. So what's that new element that is being introduced from new public administration to new public management? It is Allah market mechanism, right? See, for bad Ali, key elements are, or keywords are very important. Okay, so you forget that your standard of the answer goes down. Okay, so please make sure that you remember them. It's really, really important. This is what? Yes. So market mechanism. So what do we get to know through this? So what's the distinction from NPA to NPM? What's the value addition? Client oriented or customer oriented and the So see to be Andre, like yesterday, we, we were not really convinced about client and customer distinction, right? So see here, when I say in the NPA, you know, the people are considered as clients. It's mostly like, you know, who are clients, basically who are clients? Anybody who is recurring to a business and who seeks the professional services from one particular organization, he or she is called as a client. Okay. So now it is mostly from business to business. Okay. When it is customer, no, it need not necessarily be a professional service. It can be any common goods and services that, you know, we resort to purchase for consumption purpose. Okay, now, so that's nothing but, you know, the difference between client and customer. Okay. So in NPA, they treat it as clients. Whereas here, they are treated as customers. So it's more about like, you know, satisfaction. The convincing uh, part of the government on the people side is more. Okay, the responsibility and accountability aspects are little higher with NPM. Okay, now, so when we started from public administration to new public administration in 1950s or 20s, we had this issues, right? So from there to we had to go to the next level of development. So we came with new public administration. So from there to 60s, 70s onwards, we started seeing new trend, right? So all this globalization phenomena and all started to, you know, have impact on different eco economy and different administration. So then what happened? We had to bring in changes for that purpose. We're bringing in NPM. Okay, now, yes. Are you understanding the evolution structure? Madhya, 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 you, will, you will see certain terminologies like, you know, closed economy and Weber's bureaucracy, uh, bureaucratic theory. Okay, and uh, you know, Hawthorne uh, studies. So those are the things that are little technical and you know, they are very much, you know, specific to public discipline. Okay, now, so those things, if you come across in your notes, please make sure that you Google it and figure out what it is. Okay, now, when we are discussing in the class, I'll definitely make sure that they are being discussed. But otherwise, you know, something, some term that you do not know and is being, you know, mentioned in your copy, you know, you should definitely read them. Further reading is important because, you know, they'll simply tell. Andre, like when we do our organization's theory, the next unit and all, you'll understand that certain theories are little contradictory to Max Weber's theory of bureaucracy. Okay, now. So, it is just one statement in one of the theories. We are going to see six theories. And in one of the theory, they say that this is contradicting to Weber's uh, bureaucratic theory. If you do not know who is this Max Weber, and if you do not know, like, you know, what is, is bureaucratic theory, then, you know, you don't tend to understand the contradiction that they are coming up with. You get it? Yes. And also, we do not have, you know, see, first of all, in public administration, thinkers in the one area. Either. You know that? Public administrative thinkers. So who are these thinkers? They are like, you know, very, you know, famous people for establishing theories. Okay, now, like uh, we have different phenomena in public administration also, right? So principles of organization, principles of behavioral management, motivation, what motivates employees. So a lot of control, control mechanism. Okay, there is there is a whole lot of thing in public administration. I thought. So each one of the thinker has given a theory in each one of the disciplines inside the subject in itself. Okay, now, so now we are not having that part in our syllabus. We do not have administrative thinkers in our syllabus. Therefore, we are not going to read them. But however, it cannot, you know, be certainly told that those thinkers' contributions or information may not be helpful for your exam. If not, like, you know, deeply understanding the theory, analyzing the theory, at least basic knowledge about some important theories are required. Got it? Yes. So why I say this is, one more way to make your answer little more, you know, appealing is getting to know about some thinkers. You have Elton Mayo, okay? 
very famous thinker okay max weber a very famous guy again okay so frederick taylor okay another important person okay herbert simon like given a lot of things okay so now as and when you move ahead with your syllabus when you hear of these names and you hear some theory as such please go back and refer to what this person's theory talks about okay and also like you know these thinkers have not propagated too many theories it's not like you know there is one person and he's given like 100 theories no one person is very much famous for maximum one or two theories atha so please make sure that you get some information about those thinkers and their ideology okay na and that will definitely help you in understanding the other things very easily got it yes so as and when we move ahead if required i will discuss in the class but if not please make sure you do it as your homework atha yes so this is about our npm so now this is one diagrammatic representation of our new public management so what does it say empowerment of citizen decentralization freedom of choice this is citizen centric developments okay and then managerial support service secure better service to the citizens and managerialism so this is at the end of management development what management can do to make npm more effective then restructuring of government organization cost cutting and facilitates income growth so this is on the structural and financial developments okay structural and financial developments and this one efficiency economy effectiveness so these are the objectives of npm see actually if you look at the components of this diagram what do you understand do you correlate between the four things here not really you cannot draw much of correlation between each one of the components here but then you know you still can represent this as a you know what do i say like like, like a you know flow chart of what this npm is talking in total about okay so why i brought this up is there is no clear cut segregation but despite that you know this can be a diagram in your answers okay so this is like a lead for you to develop anything into a diagram yeah so now let's take a distinction between what is npa and npm okay so now we know one like two three points standard points okay. so now firstly the point of reference is not given here but then you know we start developing them okay so first one how the citizens are treated here okay so where citizens are treated as clients under npa it is they are treated as customers under the npm right and then npa focuses on socio economic development while npm focuses on competition and markets okay market led development it talks more about okay so what is the difference here market led and the socio economic development get it need not necessarily be profit oriented but you know this this you know activities of the government is run by the forces of market okay so they are not largely you know tweaking the expenditure or say the uh, spending style because you know they want to develop one particular section of the society got it yes then npa follows blueprint approach what is this blueprint approach and learning process approach so it is predetermined npa is like you know well planned in advance it is predetermined whereas npm is as you go you go on learning the new things okay so that's what it means by blueprint approach and learning process approach so here bureaucratic empowerment of plan formulation that is professional public service dedicated to both efficiency and social equity so one dedicated team will sit down and plan before the you know policies are going to be in launch okay whereas here people's empowerment in plan that means empowerment of individual customer to make their own choices so feedback mechanisms are strong in learning process approach okay feedback mechanism and also the grievance redressal mechanism is strong then npa state interventionism npms state minimalism so what is this minimalism what is the minimum minimal things that they are following 
core loss that's more important okay you have one basic loss that we spoke about the similarity part matter whether we spoke ala so public and private so the core laws are going to remain the same okay Applica applicability of one particular law or statute for any industry is same whereas the minor differences is about the approach of operations that's it okay so intervention of state is high in npa whereas intervention is little less then social equity as a goal here market equity as a goal so we know social equity is what what is social equity to treat every section of the society equally okay so if there is some section which is little backward compared to the majority of the crowd then they have to be paid additional attention that is nothing but social equity so when i say market equity what are we talking about there is no extra privilege given to any section of the society okay so same rules apply okay so equality is at play in npm okay then state choice dominates upon public choice in npa whereas public choice dominates upon the state choice in npm it leads to welfare government and there it leads to entrepreneurial government entrepreneurial is more towards innovation change and developments okay welfare is more towards giving equal access to everybody then values involved are humanistic values such as institution building and professional competence matters of justice and fairness broadly under the label of social equity so look at the values here individual choice provision of incentives use of cap use of competition and market as a model for government so under npa it is mostly about you know justice and fairness and institutional operational efficiency and professional competence whereas there how an individual is benefited under the uh, you know under the structure of government okay that is npm this is expenditure oriented this is revenue oriented and both are complementary to each other